بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتم بالخير الدرس الثالث lesson number three أحمد أحمد now any idea like أحمد doesn't have تنوين the name أحمد is without تنوين why is that because it is Diptot, Mamnu Minasurf. Why it's Mamnu Minasurf? Because it's on the pattern of Af'alu. So that's why it is Mamnu Minasurf. Ahmadu, Kam Taliban fi faslikum ya Aliyu. How many students are there in your classroom, O oh, Ali? Now we know uh, after Kam, the noun is singular and it is Mansub and it's indefinite noun. And it can be translated as how many students? In English, it's plural, but in Arabic, after come, we use only singular noun and it is mansub and basically it, it is called tamyiz. It's used to clear the ambiguity. So come taliban fi faslikum ya aliyu. How many students are there in your classroom? Oh Ali. Aliyun fi faslina in our classroom. Arba'ata ashara taliban. There are 14 students. Now we have learned that the numbers from 11 to 19 Exception is number 12. They are Mabniyun al Fatah. The numbers from 11 to 19, they are Mabniyun al Fatah. So we can see Arba'ata Ashara Taliban. And also we know that uh, this is basically a Murakkab. And Murakkab means it's compound. And uh, the first part of the, the number is opposite to Ma'dud. For example, if Ma'dud is masculine, uh, then the first part of the number will be feminine. Now we can see over here, fi faslina arba'at ashara taliban. There are fourteen students in our classroom. Ahmadu Ahmad, al-tulabu fi faslina akhtharu. There are more students in our classroom. Now we know that akhtharu. If we have men after that, it will be used as comparative, and if we have the noun that is in genitive case or if if, it, if it's majroor then it will be used as the superlative. Now here, At-tulabu fi faslina akhtharu, there are more students in our classroom than yours. So akhtharu, and we can see, either we can say akhtharu min faslikum, uh, because after akhtharu min is mahdhuf, or you can simply say akhtharu, and here it is used as comparative. Uh, there are more students in our classroom. Fihi tis'at ashara taliban, and there are 19 students in it. This Atashara Taliban will be the subject and Fihi will be the predicate. There are 19 students in it. Ya Aliyu, Masmat Talib al Jadid al Ladi, Ja'a Amsi. What's the name of the new student who came yesterday? Ma is, is Ismul Istifham that is used to ask a question. Ismat Talibi is Mudaf Mudaf Ilay, the name of the student. Al-Talib is Mausuf, Al-Jadid is Sifa. al as we know that it is Ismul Masul, which is used to connect the previous part of the sentence to the next part of the sentence. And generally, after al we have a complete sentence. Either it's a verbal sentence or a nominal sentence. And here we can see that Ja'a is a verbal sentence. al Ja'a Amsi, who came yesterday. And Amsi, Amsi is a, it's a verb. It's a pronoun and it is Mabniyun al al kasra It is always Mabniyun al al kasra as we can see over here. Aliyun Ismuhu Usama. His name is Usama. Now we can see that uh, the Kalima Ismun is uh, uh, the Hamza is uh, Hamza al Vassal. That's why there is no haraka on it. Uh, but we know that whenever we, we use the word Ismun, uh, we have to read it with kasra Ismuhu Usama. Usama too is also Mabniyun Minasurf because it's a masculine name and it ends with the Marbuta. Ahmadu huwa tawilun jiddan. He is very tall. Tawilun Masuf, jiddan sifa. He is very tall. Or jiddan is also used as, as a dharf as well. He is, he is really tall or he is very tall. In fact, tawilun is adjective and jiddan is dharf. And, and we know that dharf is uh, always used as mansub, it will always be used as nasb. Alaysa kadalik, isn't it? Now we know that alaysa kadalik, we have learned about laysa, 
uh, that it means not. It's a past tense, but it gives the meaning of present. And when we have the combination of Hamzatul Istifham and Laysa, that becomes a negative question. And negative question is always answered by Bala. So that's why we can say Aliyun, Bala, yes, or why not? Huwa Tawilun Jiddan, he is very tall. Wala Kinna, and Kinna is one of the sisters of Inna. Wala Kinna, but Hamidan, Atwalu Minhu, Hamid is taller than him. So after Wala Kinna, Ismu Wala Kinna will be Mansub. And Khabaru Walakinna will be Marfu, as we can see over here. And Atwalu Min, who is competitive over here, because we have Min after Atwalu, so that means it is competitive. Balahu Atwilun Jiddan Walakinna Hamidan Atwalu Min, who? Why not? Or yes, he is very tall, uh, but Hamid is taller than him. Innahu Atwalu Talibin Fi Faslina. Indeed, he is the tallest student in our classroom. Now, why do we translate it as the tallest student? Because after Atwalu, we have the noun that is Majroor. So after Atwalu or after the, basically the Sigha or the form that we use, the form is Af'alu, right? So after Af'alu, if we have the, if we have Min, then it is used for competitive. And if we have the noun that is Majroor after that, uh, then the noun will be uh, superlative. Inna who indeed he is, who will be ismu inna, and atwalu will be khabaru inna. Inna who atwalu talibin fi faslina, indeed he is the tallest student in our classroom. Wa man atwalu talibin fi faslikum, and who is the tallest student in your classroom? So this is the same expression that we have learned over here. Wa man atwalu talibin fi faslikum, and who is the tallest student in your classroom? Ahmadu Ahmad. Atwalu talibun talibin fi faslina Ibrahimu. The tallest student in our classroom is Ibrahim. Ibrahimun uh, Ibrahimu is a non-Arabic name. That's why it is Mamnu min asarf, no tanween. Uh, atwalu talibin, the superlative degree, because after Atwalu we have the noun that is majroor. So the tallest student in our classroom is Ibrahim. Aliyun, adaftaruka hada ya Ahmadu. Is this your uh, notebook, O oh, Ahmad? Inna khattaka jamilun jiddan. Indeed, your handwriting is very beautiful. Inna indeed khattaka, your handwriting. So khattaka ismu inna and jamilun will be khabaru inna. Indeed, your, uh, so it will be marfu. Indeed, your handwriting is very beautiful. Masha Allah. And whenever we see something uh, which we want to appreciate, then we use Masha Allah. Uh, Masha Allah is basically ma means what? Sha'a, want or wills, Allahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's an, an expression as we can see over here. And there is exclamation mark after that. So this is basically fail of ta'ajjub. Or this is uh, ma of ta'ajjub we can say. Masha Allahu, uh, whatever Allah wills or whatever Allah uh, wants. And after that we can say Masha Allahu kan. Uh, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that will happen and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want will not happen Ahmadu Ahmad shukran ya Aliyu thank you O Ali and shukran is mansub over here why it is mansub uh, because it's basically something is mahdhuf before it and shukran is one of the words where uh, we have to we have to make the first part uh, we have to omit it, or we have to delete it or drop it. So it's basically ashkuruka shukran ya aliyu, but there is no need to say ashkuruka shukran ya aliyu. Shukran ya aliyu is a clear, uh, I thank you, oh Ali. Similarly, ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban. Uh, there is no need to say anything before that. And that means welcome. So it is always mansub. Khatti jamilun. My handwriting is beautiful. Khatti jar majroor. Khat is, uh, sorry, Madaf Madaf Ilay, Khat is Madaf, and Ya Al Matakalim is Madaf Ilay. Khatti will be Mubtadaun and Jamilun will be Khabarun. Khatti Jamilun, my handwriting is beautiful. Khattuka Ajmalu, but your handwriting is the most beautiful. So if you want to translate it as the most beautiful, then after that uh, we will say that uh, it's Ajmalu uh, Khattin, or if you want to say uh, is more beautiful than mine, that means Ajmalu Minni. So something is 
not mentioned after that. So it's it's possible to translate it in, in two ways. Number one, and your hand your handwriting is more beautiful than mine. Or your handwriting is the most beautiful. Both of the possibilities are there. Aliyun, man had al fatalladi maaka ya Ahmadu. Who is this young man who is with you, O Ahmad? Ka'annahu akhuka. It looks like he is your brother. Now we can see that Ka'anna is one of the sisters of Inna. So we have learned about Inna, La'alla. We have learned about uh, uh, Lakinna. And now we are learning about Ka'anna. Ka'annahu akhuka. Who will be ismu Ka'anna? And akhuka will be khabaru Ka'anna. And that's why it is marfur. Ka'annahu akhuka. As if he is your brother or he looks like your brother. Ka'anna is basically harfu tashbih that is used to uh, use for tashbih for similarity. It looks like he is your brother. Ahmadu na'am, yes. Huwa akhi ashaqiqu. He is my real brother. So ashaqiq is like uh, uh, the brother who is your real brother. So huwa akhi ashaqiqu. He is my real brother. We say anta akhi. So you can be anta akhi fil islam. Yani, uh, indeed, all the believers are brothers. So we can say that you are my brother in Islam. But when you say, that means he is my real brother. I have a question. Why it is with Al? Why is that? Please answer me um, in the chat. I would like to see your answers. Uh, why we have ashaqiq and why not akhi shaqiqun? Any idea? I can give you the example. Iqra wa rabbukal akram. Rabbukal akram. Huruf al-shamsi. Tayyib. But uh, why do we have al with ashaqiq? For akhi. Okay, perfect. Um... To show, okay, definite. Mosuf Sefa Umazaid Ahsanti. Mosuf Sefa, okay. So it's Mosuf of what? Sefa of what? It's the Sefa of Akh. So we know that Akh is indefinite, right? Akh is indefinite. But when we use, uh, yeah, but when we use Ya al Mutakalim with that, now it becomes Mudah uh, Mudah and now. The kalima akh has changed into definite because of the attached pronoun ya al mutakallim. So akh is uh, masuf and a shaqiq is sifa. Now akh is because akh we can see it is uh, definite. That's why the sifa has to be definite. Akh is marfu and sifa is marfu. Akh is uh, masculine and the sifa is masculine and also akh is wahid and sifa is wahid. So this is a small, this is one of the constructions where we need to be very careful that whenever we have mudaf mudafileh construction, after mudaf mudafileh construction, if the noun is being used as a adjective, then it has to come with al. For example, huwa akhi al-kabiru, huwa akhi al-sagiru, narullahil muqada. So narullahil muqada, al muqada is the sifa of nar, nar is feminine. And Narullahi is masuf, uh, is, is mudah mudafile. Nar is indefinite noun, but because of uh, Ismul Jalala, it becomes definite. That's why the sifa that has been used for Nar is al muqada, that is also uh, feminine. So this is where we need to be um, careful about, and we need to focus on these details now. Aliyun, akbaru minka huwa am asgharu. Is he uh, older than you or younger than you? Now we have that expression am as well, and we know that. Hamzatul Istifham and Am come together. And generally the noun that comes after Hamzatul Istifham uh, should come after uh, Am. And after A, uh, we have adjective. And after Am, um, we also have adjective. Akbaru min kahua Am asgharu. Is he younger than you? Is he uh, older than you or younger than you? Ahmadu huwa asgharu minni. He is younger than me. So now we can see here that after asgharu, we have min which is used for comparative that's why you say he is younger than me aliyun fi ayi mahja'in anta ya akhi in which hostel are you in oh brother 
Mahajaun is basically haja yahjau, the place of rest or the place of sleeping. Kanu qalila min al layli ma yahjaun. We have the verse of the Quran. So it's basically dharf al makan. So one of the patterns of dharf al makan is on the pattern of maf'alun. Maf'alun is a place where we do some activity, like matbakhun, the place where we cook, right? Similarly, mahjaun. So the noun that comes on the pattern of maf'alun, that is dharf al makan. We will inshallah discuss about it in detail in book number three. But I would like you to know from, from now that and this is basically dharf al makan. Fi ayi mahajain anta ya akhi, in which hostel are you in, O oh my brother? Ahmadu, ana fil mahajail khamisi, I am in the fifth hostel. Now we have learned about the numbers, al uh, adad al tartibiyah, um, ordinal numbers from one to ten. One is exception that comes on the pattern of afalu, awalu, uh, but two to ten, they come on the pattern of fa'ilu. So it will be. الثاني الثالث الرابع الخامس so المهجا الخامس because مهجا is مجرور and it is مصوف and خامس is صفة and that's why both of them are مجرور over here أنا في المهجا الخامس I'm in the fifth hostel وهو بعيد جدا and it is very far عن الجامعة from the university علي أنا في المهجا الثامن I'm in the eighth hotel or hostel I should say وَهُوَ أَبْعَدُ مِنْ مَهْجَعِكُمْ and that is far from your hostel أَبْعَدُ مِنْ far from بَعِيدٌ and from بَعِيدٌ we have أَبْعَدُ on the pattern of أَفْعَلُ which is used for comparative أَحْمَدُ أَيُّهُمَا أَحْسَنُ which one of them is better uh, we have also learned about أَيُّهُمَا that it is used for two when you are trying to choose between two things so we will use أَيُّهُمَا أَحْسَنُ which one of them is better? Aliyun, al Mahjau al Khamisu Ahsanu. The fifth uh, hostel is is better. Uh, ahsanu or is the best. Fa inna ghurafahu awsau because its rooms are spacious. Wasiyun and from Wasiyun we have awsau are spacious. Wa nawafidahu akbaru and its windows are big. وَمَرَاحِيضَهُ أَنْظَفُ And its toilets are clean. وَالسُّرُورَ أَلَّتِي فِيهِ أَجْمَلُ And the beds that are in it are beautiful. Now we know that uh, uh, whenever we use the comparative or the superlative uh, for masculine and for feminine and for singular and plural, we use one pattern that is أَفْعَلُ That's why الْمَهْجَ الْخَامِسُ أَحْسَنُ فَإِنَّ غُرَفَهُ Now we know that غُرَف is the plural of غُرْفَةٌ so ghurfatun and ghurafun. Ghurafun is the plural of ghurfatun. So ghurafun. But here we don't have uh, the feminine form. We have only awsaw. We know that if we have the broken plural, plural, then the noun that follows it should be singular feminine. But we know that for masculine, feminine, singular and plural, we use only one pattern. That is awsaw or af'alu. Uh, so awsaw wa nawafidahu. We know that nawafid is the plural of nafidatun. And similarly, وَنَوَافِذَهُ أَكْبَرُ مَرَحِيضَهُ We know that مِرْحَادٌ is singular and the plural of مرحيض, مِرْحَادٌ is مَرَحِيض وَمَرَحِيضَهُ أَنْذَفُ And its toilets are clean وَالسُّرُورَ And we know that the plural of سَرِيرٌ is سُرُر So وَالسُّرُورَ أَلَّتِي فِيهِ And now we can see that the uh, اسم المصول that is used for سُرُر is أَلَّتِي because it's a broken plural and broken plural is treated as singular feminine. That's why we have allati fihi ajmalu. In it, in it are beautiful. So alhamdulillah, interesting lesson comes to an end. Uh, we have learned different ideas. Uh, I gave you the introduction of all these ideas in the previous lesson. So inshallah, I'm sure you remembered all the ideas and you are able to understand the lesson. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make our learning and teaching easier for all of us. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.